Welcome to Smart Engineering Tutorials. From today onwards, I am going to start the lecture series on the subject VLSI as per the syllabus of IP University. This subject is currently running in the 6th semester of EC and Triple E students. So to start with this subject, I am going to start with the MOS transistor theory in which today I will be discussing about the MOS structure. And in the coming videos, we will see in more detail. So, what are MOSFETs? They are actually field effect transistors and they are the basic building blocks of the MOS and CMOS digital ICs. Now, when compared to BJTs, these MOS transistors, they occupy very small silicon area. They involve fewer processing steps and are the most widely used the switching devices. In field effect devices, the current flow is controlled by the externally applied electric fields or we can say the gate voltage controls the current inside the device. The operation of this device depends only on the majority charge carriers flowing between the two device terminals which are the source and the drain terminals. Now we are going to see the diagram of this metal oxide semiconductor which is commonly known as the MOS structure. This MOS structure is the basis or is the backbone of all the MOS devices. We are basically concerned about the center portion of the MOS transistor in which on left and right side you see the source and drain. So what we are talking about is the uh, MOS stack at the gate and just below the gate. It is that uh, portion. So here as we can see in the diagram we have nearly three, uh, we have three uh, uh, layers. The topmost layer is the gate which is the metal gate or it can be the polysilicon gate. And in, at the bottom, we can see the P-type doped silicon. This is actually the bulk semiconductor. Uh, this is of P-type and it, it is also called as substrate or the body. In between these uh, top and bottom layers, in the middle, there is the oxide layer, which is actually SiO2, that is the silicon dioxide. And it acts as an insulating layer. So these two layers... They act as the two plates of a capacitor with this SiO2 or the oxide acting as a dielectric between them. And the oxide thickness of this SiO2 is nearly 10 Nm to 50 Nm. Now the external voltage is applied between the gate and the substrate terminals. So here in this picture we can see three layers and two terminals, the gate terminal and the substrate terminal. So the external voltage, that is the gate voltage, it is used to manipulate the carrier concentration and its local distribution within the substrate. So the voltage which will apply at the gate, it will actually control the carrier's concentration which will affect the current too. So now we are going to discuss some uh, aspects which are important for electrical conductivity so uh, at the bottom we just saw there is the P type substrate and its basic electrical properties are important we should know about them we know that that at equilibrium as per mass action law the product of the mobile electron concentration and the holes the product is equal to the square of the intrinsic carrier concentration. Now this intrinsic carrier concentration is a function of temperature. At room temperature that is at 300 Kelvin its value is 1.45 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube for silicon. Now the substrate which is uh, the p-type it is uniformly doped with acceptor since it is a p-type so we use trivalent impurities and they are also known as acceptor. For example, you are taking a boron and its concentration is said to be or we have written it as capital N suffix A. So we know that uh, when we use a uh, trivalent, it has uh, three valence electrons. So it, it, the, this acceptor atom, it replaces the silicon and it makes covalent bonding with its three valence electrons with its neighboring atoms. But the fourth one is a void. It is left vacant and that vacancy or the void is termed as the holes. 
So, as many number of atoms will be used, acceptor atoms, those many number of voids will be created. So, for p-type substrate, the number of holes which we uh, have used the abbreviation of p and uh, the suffix is po, uh, small p here we are using for the p-type and uh, the p-type substrate, the number of holes is nearly equal to the acceptor atoms, Na. So, by using the mass action law, that is NP is equals to Ni square. So, we know the value of P. So, the number of electrons can be calculated. N is equals to Ni upon this value of P. That I have written here. So, number of electrons in the P-type substrate is nearly equal to Ni square upon number of O, that is Na. This as per the mass action law. So, here the Na, that is the number of acceptor atoms used, is of the order of 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube. And if you see in the intrinsic, the order is 10 to the power 10. So it is far more larger than that of Ni. Here the equations 2 and 3, they are used far away from the surface. And by surface, what do we mean? The surface is called as the uh, point where, or the surface is the area where the substrate and the oxide layer meet. So these two equations are valid far away from the surface deep inside the substrate. So now when we talk about the electrical conductivity or the electrical properties, the conditions on the surface, that is the point where the substrate and the oxide layer meet, not the point is actually a layer. So the conditions on the surface, they are more significant for electrical behavior and operation of the MOS system. And for this, we need to understand about the energy band diagram and then we will see how it uh, changes when all these three layers, that is the substrate, the oxide and the uh, gate, they all three are brought in contact to form the MOS structure. So the energy band diagram will be discussed in the next video. So uh, to share with other friends and uh, kindly do subscribe to my channel for further notifications so that you can know more about the energy band diagram in the coming videos thank you